Please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you are about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, as you shall answer unto God? You may be seated. And the state may examine. Thank you, Your Honor. Good morning, Ms. Manley. How are you? Good. Um, can you please state your name and go ahead and spell your last name for the record? April Manley, M-A-N-L-E-Y. Okay. And Ms. M Manley, um, how old are you? 47. Okay. And are you married? Yes. Who are you married to? James Manley. Okay. And how long have you been married? 27 years. Do you have any children? Two boys. Okay. And how old are they? Cody's 27 and Gregory's 24. Okay. And have both of your children graduated from high school and are currently working? Yes, they are. Okay. Do you work? No, I don't. Okay. And why don't you work? I have a lot of medical issues. Can you tell us um, where you live? Union Hill. Okay. And how long have you lived there? 27 years. Okay. Um, I'm going to ask you to pull it State's Exhibit X. Miss Manley, I'm going to have a, a map. It should show in front of you, but down from Dana's. Yes, okay. right off 32. Pardon me? Right off 32. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, and how long have you lived there? 27 years. 27 years. I'm sorry. Did I ask you that already? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Um, can you tell us um, what county is your address in there on Union Hill? Adams County. Adams County. Okay. And can you tell us, do you live close to your um, mother-in-law? Yes, yeah, she lives right across the yard from me. Right across the yard from you, is mm -hmm. that what you said? Okay. Do you know what county her residence is She's in? She's in Pike County. Okay. Our property splits right down the middle. Okay. How close would you say you are to the residence that Dana um, and Hannah and little Chris lived in? It wouldn't even be quite a mile. So just for way of background, I'm just going to have you talk a little bit about um, who the various people are in the family, okay? Um, I'm not sure that we've really connected all, all the dots um, so far, but um, go ahead and tell us, first of all, you're, you said you were married to James Manley, yes. correct? And can you tell us um, who is Dana Roden? She's my sister-in-law, James's sister. And she was married to Chris Sr., correct? Yes. And they have three children, correct? Yes. And who are her three children, or their three children? Hannah, Frank, and Christopher. Okay. Do you know where Dana worked um, at the time of her death? I don't know the name of the nurse at home. It was the new one right there beside Adams County Hospital. Okay. And has she always, what, do you know what she did? She was a nurse assistant. Okay. And was she always in that field? Yes. Okay. And when, when did she start? She started her senior year in high school. Okay. And 
And did she also have um, a dealer's license for cars? We found out after her death that she did. Okay. Um, and then Chris Sr. obviously would be your former brother-in-law, yes. correct? Um, and do you know where he worked? Bear Creek Lane. And then, do you know how old Frankie was at the time that he was killed? I believe it was 20. Yeah, because they just start 27, yeah. Okay. Is he close in age to any of your children? Yes, him and Cody's two weeks apart. Okay. And in fact, did um, Frankie and Cody work together at the time of Frankie's death? Yes. Okay. And can you tell us where did, um, did Frankie and Hazel always live in the trailer um, where Frankie was found? Why they was together, yes. Okay. Where did Frankie live prior to that? With his dad. At the 4077 address? I'm not sure the address is, but yeah, Chris. Okay, the one that he, Chris Sr. was living yes. in. Yes. Correct, okay. And then who lived in that um, trailer that Frankie and Hazel were at? Dana. Okay. Dana and Hannah and little Chris? Yes. Okay. And had you ever been in that residence yes. before? And do you know where each of the rooms were as far as who stayed in which room? Yes. And can you go ahead and tell us that? When it was Dana lived there or Frankie? Um, well, both, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Dana had the masters, the room closest to Chris Senior's house. Okay, so when you walked in the door, would that be to the left or to the right? Yes. To the left? No. Yes. Okay. And then? The little room going back the hallway to the right, the first bedroom was Hannah's. And then the back bedroom where Frankie was found was Christopher's. Okay. And can you tell us, um, at the time of their deaths, they were living um, at that 3122 Union Hill Road that you said was closer to your, uh, your, your closest to that address. Yes. Um, than the others. Um, do you know how long they had been there? A that? month. A month? A month. Okay. A month to the day? Or? Yes. Okay. Um, and you were aware that um, Hannah had just had a child, correct? Yes. In fact, were you at the hospital? Yes. She had okay. Do you know who else was at the hospital when she gave birth to? Uh, it was me, Dana, um, Corey. And I believe my mother in law was here. Okay. Um, and who is Corey? It was Hannah's boyfriend. And do you know where Hannah Mae worked at the time that she was killed? Um, the little nurse home there on Bear Creek. I can't think the name of it. On which? which? On Bear Creek right there. Okay. Edgewood, that's the name of it. Edgewood? Yes. That's what you said. Okay. Um, and do you know what she was doing there? Nurse assistant. And little Chris and um, Hannah were both living with Dana at that 3122, yes. correct? And do you, had you ever been in that location? Yes. Okay. And can you tell us um, where they each stayed in that location? If you walked in the front door, turned right, that little bedroom that was off by itself was Christopher's. And then if you turned left and went back through the kitchen and living room, Dana's was the first bedroom we'd run into, and then if you turn 
To your right, Hannah's was the add on. Okay. And Gary Roden was? Chris's cousin. Okay. And then Kenneth Roden. Chris's brother. Okay. And Hannah Hazel. Frankie's fiance. Okay. And can you tell us who Chelsea Robinson is? It is Frankie's ex-girlfriend, his first baby's mom. Okay. And she is the mother of whom? Brentling. Okay. Can you tell us, um, April, what your relationship was like with the eight people that we just discussed, um, specifically the ones that lived there on Union Hill Road? Um, would you see them often? Would you, what was your I would see your... Dana, the three kids, or at least one of them daily. Okay. And can you tell us, um, would she sometimes stop by your property to see her parents? She too? would stop just about every day to check on her mom and dad on her way to work. Can you describe the nature of your husband's relationship with his sister? Him and Dana was very close. They had an unbreakable bond. Okay. Um, are you aware of the, well, first of all, how many siblings did Dana have? Besides your husband? Besides my husband, two others. Okay, and who are they? Bobby Joe and Kathy. Okay, and then um, Chris Sr., do you know who his siblings are? I'll try to get them all straight. <laughs> there was Chris, Kenneth, Tony, and Brady, Wilma, Teresa, Norma. I think you got them. Um, okay. Uh, going to take you to um, April 22nd of 2016. Um, first of all, I want to ask you if you remember the night before, um, what you were doing, what was going on um, in your household. I was, I didn't know at the time when I found out a couple of days later that I had severe bronchitis, so I was sleeping on a recliner where I could breathe. So you slept in a recliner so you could breathe all night long? Yes. Okay. And can you tell us, um, do you recall what time you got up that morning or what was going on when you got up? It was probably seven because I was making, no, it was earlier than that. It was six because I had to get my youngest son that was still in high school up for school okay. and then get Cody up for work. And so you're getting the children up and at them. Um, do you recall if your husband worked that day? No, he did not work. Okay, where did he work at that time? He worked for Hobart and Logging. Okay. And do you know why he wasn't working? Rain. Okay. Was it raining when you were up that morning or had it rained overnight, do you know? It rained overnight, I believe. And do you recall what he was doing instead of working? Laying in bed, I believe. <laughs> okay. Um, what do you remember happening then during that time period? I remember him leaving, to, said that he was going to finally go out to his mom and dad and so go to Dana's, or not Dana's, I'm sorry, Chris's. Okay. 
did you go with him at that time? No, I did not. Okay. And do you recall if your youngest son had been, went off to school yet at that point? Yes. Okay. Um, and do you recall what Cody was doing at that time? We was trying to get a hold of Frankie because it was done time for them to leave and he hadn't made it yet. Because Frankie came to my house every day and read with Cody. Okay. So Cody and him worked together and they would ride together and yes. Frankie would come to your house first. Yes. Okay. Um, what do you remember happening next? I remember my husband coming back and telling me that Dana was also dead. <laughs> so your husband comes back and tells you that, that he believes Dana is dead. Yes. What do you do as a result of that? I went with him out to Dana's. He was an emotional wreck. I didn't want him to be alone. Okay. Did he tell you anything about Kylie at that time? James, yes. Yeah. He said that he'd heard Kylie crying, but he went and walked back there because he knew what kind of a mother Hannah was, and she wouldn't be letting Kylie cry like that. So he was concerned because he felt Hannah would have been tending to the baby. Yes. Okay. So you go, so you said you went with him so that he would not be alone. Um, did you arrive at Dana's yes. residence? And what did you do when you got there? We stood down at the bottom of the driveway. Okay. And what was your purpose of that, standing out at the end of the driveway? We was waiting for the cops to come by. Okay, and what was your intent then? We flagged one down. Okay, and is that what you did? Yes, after, because we'd already talked to a cop on my mother and law's phone that was already out at one of the other scenes. Okay. So you had a conversation with an officer who was with your mother-in-law up at Frankie's? Yes. Okay. And so they knew that you needed help or yes. assistance at that location too. Yes. Okay. And once officers arrived, were you able to flag them down? Yes. Okay. And did anybody else, um, EMS or anybody else arrive on that scene? Yes, the EMS came shortly after the first officer. Okay. And once the police got there, what did you do? I. They asked me, came out and asked me who else should be there, and I told them, and then they said they couldn't find little Chris. And I told them where his bedroom was, and they came back in and out, and told me they still couldn't, and asked me to draw a map of Dana's home, the layout. Okay, and did you do that? Yes. Okay. And would you agree that, that their residence is not laid out in a straightforward manner, no, I guess. She had a couple of ones. Okay. And so after you drew a map for the officers, were they able to locate everybody in that residence? At the okay. time I was there, they still didn't know that it was little Chris in there. Okay. I never found out ties at the hospital that they found him. And do you know if his vehicle was there at that time? No, it wasn't. Okay. And did that contribute at all to the confusion yes. since his car wasn't there? Yes. Okay. And do you know if that was located later? Yes. Where was it located? We later found out that he had gotten in trouble. His dad took it and took the tires and hit his lug nuts. <laughs> and while you were there, um, did they uh, remove Kylie from that residence? Yes. And what happened then? 
An officer went in and got her and brought her out to an EMT. Say it again. An officer went in and okay. got her and brought her out to an EMT. Okay. And what did the EMT do with her? They put her in the squad. Okay. And what did you do? I asked if I could hold her and they told me that I couldn't until they collected any evidence that might be on her. Okay. Were you ultimately allowed to hold her? Later at the hospital I was, after they took her clothes and stuff. Okay. So did you stay with her? Yes. While they were tending to her at the yes. residence? Yes, I stayed okay. at the hospital with her. You say you did go to the hospital with yes. her? Yes. Do you remember which hospital you went to? Adams County. Okay. And you actually rode in the ambulance? Yes. Okay. And what happened while you were at the hospital? What, what did they do with her? They kept her back in her room and I was allowed to stay with her until a certain point and then I, they wouldn't let me stay no more. Okay. Um, and while you were there, um, did anybody else show up to the hospital? Yeah, I had some, I don't recall who all, but I knew there was a couple of my nieces and nephews there and a cousin of mine, and then eventually at the end, Jake showed up, Jake Wagner. Okay. And where were you when Jake Wagner showed up? I was outside smoking. Okay. And can you tell us how that interaction went? He was just like, you know, it was, it was motionless. That makes sense to you. He did it, no cries, no, like, he wasn't worried about nothing. Wasn't so, someone that bought, had just lost someone they claimed to love. Okay. So he was not showing emotion at no. that time? What was he, why was he there? He came to check on Kylie to see if he could take her. Did you inform him that um, he could not take her? Yes. Okay. And did he hug you at all while he was there? Yes. How long would you say he was there? It wasn't long, maybe. It was like 10, 15 minutes, because it was shortly after that I went back to go back in with Kylie and they told me I couldn't be there anymore. They told you you couldn't be there anymore? Okay. And do you know if Ruger was at that same hospital? They brought Ruger, but that's when they told me I had to leave is when the child service came in with Ruger. Okay. Where did you go after you left the hospital? I went up to Union Hill Church to meet with the rest of my family. Okay. And at some point, did you learn um, that Kenneth Roden had also been killed? Yes. Okay. Family told me when I got there when you got to the church. Okay. And April, can you tell us, um, did you go to the funerals? Yes. Of all eight individuals? I did not go to Gary's. Okay. And was Gary's held separately? Yes. Do you know where it was held? In Kentucky. Okay. When you were at the funerals, well, first of all, can you tell us, were some or all of them held together other than Gary's. Chris and Kenneth, Dana's and the three kids as was together. Okay. And did you see um, Billy Wagner there at the funeral? Yes. And was there any 
um, did you observe any injuries on him at that time? He had like, bruising on his face. Okay. And what about Jake Wagner? Did you see him at the funerals? Yes. Okay. And I guess I should back you up. When, um, when you saw Jake at the hospital, um, can you tell us if you noticed anything unusual about him? His hair it was extremely dark. Okay. And had you had contact with Jake Wagner prior to that date? Um, several, many times. Yes. Okay. And can you tell us, was that his natural hair or did it appear to be different? It was different. Okay. Is that showing on your screen there? Yes. Okay. And in looking at that picture, um, first of all, who is that? Jake Wagner. Okay. And can you tell us if his hair in that picture, uh, if that is, looks similar or different than when you saw him at the hospital? That's the way it looked at the hospital. And can you tell us, um, were you interviewed by the, by BCI and the police? Later in the case, yes. Okay, so not that same day? No. Okay, but as the months progressed, yes. correct? And did you provide both your DNA and phones to BCI? Yes. Regarding Dana's new place, um, how many times had you been there? Had you been there? Um, to the new one, yeah. several times. Okay, and what purposes? For what purposes? Different stuff, like I made her curtains and stuff for her bedroom. I painted her living room kitchen. Helped her just with the moving and stuff? Yes. Okay. And do they have a baby shower for Hannah there? Yes. Did you attend that? No. Okay. Um, during the week um, leading up to the homicides, um, had you been there? That week? Yes. Yes, I was there the Wednesday before. Do you recall what day of the week Hannah had Kylie? Wow. That's, a, that's a tough math right. thing on there. So um, do you know the date? She had her on the 17th, I believe, of April. Okay. And you indicated you were there on that Wednesday. Can you tell us who else was there? My son Cody went out with me. And then already there was Dana, little Chris, Hannah, Kylie, a friend of Dana's that she worked with. And before I left, Jake had come in. And Sophia was there, but I don't recall if she came with Jake or she was already there with Hannah. Okay. And why were you there? Dana. Excuse me, Dana had called 
we'd come out, me and Cody, to bring a drill because the kids had been swinging on her laundry room door and knocked it off and she wanted us to come finish taking it off. Just finish taking it off? Yes. Okay. Um, and you indicated that as you were leaving, Jake was arriving? Yes. Okay. And do you know what his purpose was? Hannah said to show her how to set up a baby bed for Kylie that had been Sophia's. Can you tell us, um, did you know Jake Wagner prior to that date? Yes. Okay. And did you know all of the Wagners, I guess? I know of them. Okay. Tell me about that. I grew up on Lloyd's Run, so they owned all the property all the way around us. Okay. And then as Hannah got with them, I know of okay. Jake, Billy, and George, but the only one I really was around was... Jake. Okay. Because of Hannah? Yes. Okay. And were there times that Jake would stay with um, Hannah when she was living in the residence, the Frank Gate in Hazel? Yes, he would spend the night. Okay. Did you ever see Billy um, at Chris's residence? Not at Chris's. At, I'm sorry, Billy Wagner? Did you ever see him at any of the residences, I guess? Not at, specifically at the residence. I'd seen him with them before, but not. Okay, all right. Tell us when you saw them together. I seen him come up with Kenneth at Pike County Hospital the night that Chris had got beaten with a 204. So Chris Sr. was in the hospital? Yes. And Kenneth and Billy came together? Yes. And what can you tell us about Billy at that time? He stood out to me because he, I always did think he was scary. <laughs> he stood out to me because he was wearing a gun on his side that night. On his what? On the side when he hooked his belt. Okay. Was it like in a holster or something? Yes. Okay. And did you hear him discussing anything with Kenneth? Him and Kenneth was talking about getting revenge on whoever it was that had beaten Chris. Okay. He was obviously hurt pretty bad. Yes. Okay. Do you know the extent of his injuries? I don't recall. I remember he got pretty beat up. Okay. Um, and when else have you seen um, Billy Wagner? Um, when D Hannah Mae was involved in a car accident. Okay. And where did you see him at that time? He showed up to the scene. Okay. And you had two? Yes. Obviously. Okay. And where was that, do you recall? At uh, 41 and 32 in Peebles. Did you ever see or meet George Wagner? I had seen him a couple of times in all the years, and it was like at Hannah, not Hannah, sorry, Sophia's birthday parties. Okay. And where, where would Sophia's birthday parties be? They would usually be at the Wagner residence. Okay. And do you remember where at that time was their residence? Peterson. And what about Angela Wagner? I never seen her much either besides Sophia's parties. Okay. And can you tell us, um, you indicated Jake Wagner was the one who would be around the most because of Hannah, and mm -hmm. that he would sometimes be up at that residence that Frankie and Hazel were found in when Dana and Hannah and little Chris lived there. Yes. Um, can you tell us um, what your interactions would have been with him? We didn't interact. I didn't like him. He didn't like me. Okay. Why not? 
because he thought I was nosy and needed to stay in my place because I would defend Hannah. Okay. And how do you know that he felt that way? Because I was at my house one evening and Ned got into it and Hannah left. She had just got a driver's license. She was a new driver. And she called me. He would left after and she called me and said he was chasing her around at high speeds. And I told her to try to get away somewhere and she got finally got away from him and hid behind a church on Union Hill. And I called her mom and her mom called her dad and then I called Hannah back and stayed on the phone with her. That's all Chris got to her. Okay. So they had started at they were both at your house? Yes. Both Jake and Hannah Mae? Yes. Okay. And you said they got into it. Can you do you recall I don't at all? recall what they was arguing about. Okay. I know he had said at one point there at the house that he had bought everything for the baby. She was pregnant and that he would take it all and she'd have nothing. Okay. But what had started their argument, I don't know. Okay. And she left in her vehicle? She left in her mom's car that she had. Okay. You said this was when she just started driving yes. and she was pregnant? Yes. Okay. And did he have a separate vehicle then? Yes. Okay. Were you aware that he was chasing her or uh, not when they it, left? No. Just when she called you and yes. told you that. Okay. And did he ever communicate to you that you were nosy and needed to stay in your place or he told Hannah. Okay. And were you also aware that um, Chris had had to go and get Hannah um, one day when she yes. left the Wagners? Yes. Was there any other interactions that you um, had with Jake or that you observed with Jake um, specifically um, Halloween or other other things like that? Well, I'll, I'll sustain the objection. Was, was there any other observations you had of Jake Wagner that caused you not to like him? He was just, he was very controlling over Hannah. Like, we wasn't allowed to take Sophia trick or treating, even though if it was Hannah's week. Um, after Hannah had, had Sophia, she had got, Hannah was always a chunky little monkey. And she had got down so tiny because he would tell her that she was fat and tell her not to eat. Did Hannah ever tell you that she was scared? Yes. Of Jake? Yes. And did she indicate that she was afraid of Jake and his family? Yes. Tell us about that. We was, the day they moved in their new place, we was out there working on the yard as a tree and fell. And Hannah would start telling me that. Basis is. It's hearsay, Joe. I'm sorry. It's hearsay. Your Honor, I believe this goes to the state of mind of Hannah May at that time. If she's talking about being afraid. Yeah, can we approach, please? But yeah.
court will sustain the last objection made by defense counsel. Okay, Ms. Manley, without, um, telling us why she was afraid or what, or what she told you as to why she was afraid, can you tell us, um, who she was afraid of? The Wagner family. Okay. And can you tell us what she was afraid of? Objection. Well, we're going to get into hearsay if we're start, going to start reasons. Uh, you know. It's not a reason, Your Honor. It's, it's what she was afraid of. Objection. We just talked about this. I'm not. I think it, we haven't identified anyone here. We're just talking very generally. I'm afraid we're going to get into inadmissible hearsay, so I'm going to sustain that objection. Okay. Ms. Manley, did you um, become aware at some point that um, Hannah had been present for an incident regarding Tabitha? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry, basis. One of the questions leading, Your Honor. I said again. One, the question is leading. Wow. Two, uh, we're getting into hearsay issues again. Well, ask, ask the question again, and then what, what question are you asking her? I asked if she became aware that Hannah was present for an incident regarding Tabitha. Well, it is a leading question. I'm going to sustain the objection. Okay. Um, did you ever have to go pick up um, Hannah from the Wagners? Did you ever pick her up from the Wagners? Mm. Oh, yes. One time, they, she had called and asked me to pick her up when they lived on Bethel Hill. Well, it, the, the response actually even goes beyond the question, uh, but it also may get be getting into hearsay, so I'm going to sustain the objection. The jury will disregard the response to that question. Okay. Other than the other than the yes, the jury may consider that that she went and picked up. Yeah, but when we Hannah May, and at that time she, they were living at Bethel Hill. Yes. Okay. And where did you pick her up at? I went to the graveyard parking lot across from their driveway and sat and wait for okay. them to bring her down to me. Were you ever present for exchanges between um, Jake and Hannah? No. Did you ever go to the fireworks? Um, first of all, are you aware that um, Chris Sr. had fireworks display every 4th of July? Yes. Okay. And actually had his fireworks dealer license, correct? I don't know. You didn't know that? Okay. <laughs> Um, but he would do that annually, correct? Yes. Okay. And did you ever attend those? I attended a couple, not many of them. Okay. And when you were in attendance, did you see any of the Wagners there? I don't recall them being there, no. Okay. Not even Jake? No. Okay. Okay. Back to... Um, the family. Um, did you know about any marijuana grows at Chris Seniors? No. Had you ever been out to Kenneth's? No, I hadn't been to that property for years. Okay. 
when had you been there? What was the most recent time you had been there? Prior? It had probably been 10 years prior when I went down there when my children and Frankie and Christopher was working on a derby car in the barn. Okay. So they would go down to Kenneth's? Yeah, Brady's. Brady's. Okay. And Brady Roden is one of the brothers of Chris, correct? Yes. And he lives somewhat close yes. to Kenneth. Okay. Um, did you know about any um, chicken fighting? No. Okay. Um, did you know, and you said you did not know about any of the marijuana grows no. that were found? Okay. And you talked about Frankie doing derby cars, correct? Yes. Who would you say were Frankie Roden's best friends? Brett Hathbill, James Spillman, Brandon Roden, Jake Roden, Cody, my son. Cody, your son? Yes. Okay. And who else did you, you said Brett? Brett Hathbill, James Spillman, Brandon and Jake Roden. And how do you know that? Because they would all come to my house with him. They was always with him. Okay. Did Frankie ever come to your house with George Wagner? No. Or Jake Wagner for that matter? No. Um, were you aware of um, the locks on Frankie's trailer, um, if those were new, newer at the time of the homicides? They had put them up shortly before Dana had moved out, moved to her new place. Okay. And can you tell us why that was? Because Brentley had got out and went to his papa's and Chris went back up there and got them all up. And they was all in trouble because that baby got out. Okay. And they hadn't realized it? Yeah. They okay. was all sleeping. Okay. So do you know what, which new locks they put up? They put the chain locks towards the top where Brentley couldn't get to them. Okay. Can you tell us who were Hannah Mae's um, closest friends? Her closest friend was Kendra Roden. And who is Kendra Roden? It's also her cousin. It's Kenneth's daughter. When Hannah was pregnant, um, did you know who the father was? Yes. And who was the father? Charlie Gilly. And did you know that before she was born? Or yes. Did? Okay. Did Hannah ever say it was anybody else's baby other than no. Charlie Gillies? Were you present at the hospital? You know, you indicated you were present at the hospital when um, Kylie was born. Um, were you present uh, when Jake came? Wagner came? No. Okay. Ms. Manley, after the homicides, um, in addition to trying to cooperate and help BCI in any way you could, um, did you ever try to see Sophia? We have, I had called him got a hold of him and asked him to bring her to my oldest son's wedding and he did bring the wedding but they showed up at the end of the reception. Okay. And who was they? Sophia and Jake. Okay. And what was your purpose of inviting them at that time? We was all just trying to keep Sophia in our lives. And was there any other time that he allowed you to see her? 
I had seen her one other time at Brentley's birthday party down at Bear Creek. Okay. And did you try to see her more often than just those two times? My mother and father-in-law had got a hold of him several times and asked him, but eventually we quit trying. Yeah. Objection. On your side. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, the court, uh, without any further basis for that response, the court will sustain the objection and direct the jury to disregard that response. Okay. So, um, did you want to see Sophia more than just those two times? Absolutely. Okay. And what time period are we talking about from the homicides um, uh, until the point that the Wagners were arrested? How often did you, how many times did you get to I'd see I'd only Sophia? seen her them twice. Was there a time that you um, took presents to her? Yes, there was. I'm sorry, I did forget about that. Me and Chelsea Robinson. Chelsea had asked me to ride with objection. her to take. Yeah, I'll sustain the objection. The response is going beyond the question. Just, just listen to the question and respond to the question. Okay, go ahead. So you... You went with Chelsea Robinson? Yes, we took gifts to Peterson Road to their house. Okay. And did they um, allow you into their home? No, we had to stay right there in that foyer as you come in the door. And what? Right as you come in the door, that foyer. Okay. Um, Ms. Manley, on April 22nd of 2016, the day that you went to Dana's house with your husband, um, did you ever go into that house? No. And did you go to or into any of the other homes where the eight no. victims were found? I have no other questions at this time, Your Honor. The defense may cross the panel. Thank you, Your Honor. some questions just for clarification in regard to the answers that you had just gave Ms. Kneff, okay? Okay. And so we have certain rules here. Uh, it, uh, when I ask you questions, I would like for you to uh, not tell me what somebody else had told you if you can avoid that. In other words, I just want to know about your personal observations, okay? Do you understand? Yes. Okay. And uh, I noticed you nodded your head. I just have to remind you that we have a court reporter here trying to record our answers. So if I catch you nodding your head, I'll just ask you to say out loud what your answer is. And so if I understood your testimony correctly, you have been married to James Manley for 27 years. Is that right? Yes. All right. And you live right next door to his mother. Is that yes. Right? Okay, and it's right there at the beginning of Union Hill Road. Yes. Okay. So, on the morning of April the 22nd, uh, you, I understand that that night of April 21st into the morning, you were very sick, you had bronchitis, is that yes. right? Yes. And because of that, you had difficulty sleeping in your bed, is that yes. right? Yes. And so you slept in the living room in a recliner. Yes. And uh, you have a cell phone, is that right? Yes. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, um, with your testimony, 
that your husband is a logger by trade, is that right? Yes. And in, in fact, he was engaged in that line of occupation on that time of April the 22nd of 2016. Yes. And he did not go to work because of the rain that night, yes. right? Yes. Okay. Now, and you've been interviewed by BCI agents in regard to this case. Yes. Several times, right? Yes. And you have reviewed your phone records and you have been questioned about text messages from Jake Wagner. Yes. At about 3.30 in the morning on April the 22nd, is yes. that right? But you did not possess that cell phone, right? I did not make no calls, no. Yeah, in fact, there were some other calls to somebody else with that phone. Do you recall who that was? Or text messages? To Chad Burns? Yes. And who is Chad Burns? He's my husband's best friend. All right. And so you had told BCI agents that your husband must have been the one that used your phone that night. Is that right? He used it to call his boss, yes. Okay. And so you're not the one who texted or received a text from Jake Wagner, though, right? No. All right. And we talked about the location of where Dana lived. Dana lived at the mobile home where Frankie, Frankie and uh, Hannah Gilly lived. Is that right? She used to, yes. Okay. And so, uh, who? And that address is forty-one ninety-nine. Is that right, or do you? I don't know the addresses. Okay. I know where they live, but. But at the time of the murders, the residence in which Frankie and Hannah lived was Dana's residence previously. Is yes. that right? Okay. And who lived in that residence? When it was Dana? Yeah. Dana, little Chris, and Hannah. Okay. And do you know how long they had lived there? Oh, it was years. I'm not sure exact okay. amount. How often did you visit them there? Well, I visit Dana often. Okay. And Chris, he, Chris Sr., he lived in the mobile home just next to that residence, is that right? Yes. In fact, the residence in which he was killed in. Yes. Okay. Now, you're aware that through your testimony, you testified that Dana had resided in the new location for about 30 days, is yes. that right? Yes. In fact, Chris Sr. bought that residence for her, right? Yes. And you, it's your understanding that Chris Sr. paid $30,000 cash, is that right? I know it was a high amount, but I'm not, Do you I don't recall? Remit, recall the exact amount, no. Okay, I can refresh your recollection with an interview that you had given a BCI agent if you need me to yeah. do that. Are you aware? Well, so about the purchase price, are you personally are you, aware well, of that, or is that are something you, you Are you withdrawing the former question? Then? I'm going to retract the question and rephrase it. The uh, purchase price of the mobile home, is that something you're personally aware of, or something that was just relayed to you? No, I knew of it. I just don't recall now. It's been so many years. Okay. And I don't recall the exact price. Okay. Now, I asked you $30,000 cash, right? He did give cash up, yes, I know. Okay. But I don't I was saying I don't recall if it was thirty thousand. It's been Okay. And in fact it was not unusual for Chris Senior to have large amounts of cash, is that right? I'm not aware of his finances. I cannot answer for his finances. All right. Well, let me ask you, at one point you and your husband had split, is that right? Yes. And I believe your husband, James, had gotten into some criminal trouble, had gotten into some trouble, is that right? Yes. And Chris Sr. had given him $5,000 to help with his expenses in relation to that? I wasn't with him. We were split. I... Okay. All right. So would you remember giving that information to a BCI agent? Could have. I don't understand what you're getting to. Could you explain? I'm just asking you questions if you can answer them. Do you recall giving that information to a BCI agent? That my husband got money from Chris? Yes. Yeah, I could have. 5000 I don't know the amount, no. Okay.
Also, in regard to Chris, you had testified that at one point Chris was in the hospital beaten by a two by four. Is that right? Yes, at the ER. Okay. And do you know, are you aware of the circumstances behind that? No, I don't. Okay. So on the morning of April the 22nd, one of the children was taken to a hospital in Adams County, is that right? Yes. And was taken by ambulance? Yes. And you rode in that ambulance, is that right? Yes. Okay. And which hospital is it that you went to? Adams County. Okay. And while you were there, Jake Wagner showed up, is that right? Yes. Explain that to me. Where were you? What did he, what was his appearance? Uh, can you give us some more information on that? I can tell you what I remember. Okay. He was, we was outside smoking and he came up to the cars where we've stayed in. Yeah. Who is we? Who, who else was there with you? There was a couple of my nieces and nephews and my cousin. Okay. Some other family members. And so uh, Jake was alone, is that right? Yes. And he approached you and he spoke with you? Yes. And as a result of that conversation, uh, you understood Jake was there to inquire about Kylie, is that right? Yes. All right. And was he wanting to take Kylie? He had thought that Kylie belonged to him. Okay. And I believe in your direct testimony, you said that he appeared emotionless. Is that right? That's right. And how long did Jake stay there talking with you? It wasn't long because right after I went in the smoke, they told us we couldn't stay no longer and I left us maybe 15, 20 minutes. Now there was nothing about that conversation which caused you to alert BCI immediately about Jake Wagner, right? No. And now you know that he was involved in these murders, right? That's what I have said. And so, however he behaved, it was in a way that did not alert you that he was involved, right? At the time, I wasn't paying no attention to anybody around me. Okay. And you testified that you're aware of Jake and who he is. And in fact, there was a situation in which Jake had chased Hannah. Yes. Is that right? Yes. In fact, you witnessed an argument between those two in the driveway. I was in my house. Okay. In your house or in your driveway? In my house. Okay. And that's where Hannah had fled and Jake chased her, right? Yes. As for Frankie, how often would he visit you at your home? I see Frankly, Frankie almost every day. Okay. And that would be visiting you at your home? Yes. Okay. Or would you visit him at his home? Just, I'm just most, curious the extent of the contact you had with him. I would see him mostly at mine, but I would go to his once in a while. Okay. You spoke of Hannah, and you, and you, I think, had a close relationship with Hannah, right? Yes. And you testified who the father of Hannah's uh, child is, and that's who? Charlie Gilly. She was also dating a boy by the last name of Holdren? Corey. Okay. And, and that was close in time to, um, to dating this other fellow that you mentioned. Is that right? Not too far. Okay. You testified about your efforts to see Sophia, and you were communicating with Jake to, to try and make contact. Is that I right? I had sent him a couple of messages, yes. Now, there was an incident that you had testified in which you had went to pick up Hannah. You recall that, right? Yes. And how did you know, without telling me anything about the conversation, how did you know that Hannah needed picked up? She called me and asked me to come pick her up. Okay. And, uh, and then she told you, I'll meet you at the end of the driveway or yes, something? Yes, because that, that driveway effect? was very rough. Okay, all right. 
Had she ever called you before from the Wagners? Not that I recall, no. Okay, you just recall that one incident when she called? Yes. And do you recall if she called from her cell phone or was it a landline? My, I don't recall. That's been okay. years ago. All right. Derby, hunting. Okay, all right. And do you know who he hunted with? I never went hunting with him. I'm assuming he's friends. Okay, all right. Thank you. No further questions. Just say we should redirect. Ms. Manley, you were asked about um, the generosity of Chris Roden um, or his finances and providing money to people. Um, did he also give you money to help you with paying for your mom's funeral? Yes, he did. And you were asked if um, Jake Wagner was acting like someone who didn't have anything to do with these murders. Um, I believe in your direct testimony, you indicated that he did not ask about Hannah. He was only asking about Kylie. Okay. And that he was not showing any emotions. Correct. And you did share that information with the police too, correct? You did ultimately share that information with the BCI. About the, him coming to the hospital? Yeah. Yes. Okay. And you indicated that um, Chad Burns was your um, husband's best friend. Um, is he deceased now? Yes, Chad's deceased. He was killed in a car accident. Okay. <coughs> Do you recall texting with him later that day um, on April 27th? I don't even recall having a conversation with him now. Okay. Did you also, before the homicides, did you have Jake Wagner's number? No. After the homicides, did you get his number? Yes. Okay. In order to communicate to see Sophia? Yes. Okay. Um, I asked you about the um, Jake and George being at the funerals. Did you see George or Angela at the funerals? No. And can you tell us, um, oh, okay, so did any of your sons go hunting with Frankie? Gregory might have a couple times. Okay. And can you tell us, um, did you also share with BCI why it bothers you so much that Jake hugged you that day? Because I often wonder if he still had my baby's blood on him when he touched
I have no other questions, Your Honor. Any further cross? No further questions. You may step down. Thank you. Would this be a good time for a break? Yes, Your Honor. Uh,